If you're like my friends and me, maybe you like to set up shop at a coffee shop or hit up happy hour post work. Well, I've noticed something recently. A lot of drinks with an unfamiliar ingredient, kava. Turns out it's not unfamiliar to everyone. Gen Z's and millennials are drinking it up, all in the name of feeling better. The first time that I had it, I felt just very mellow. I was surprised at how it had a lot of the anxiolytic properties um, of like having a few glasses of wine or taking CBD, but I felt that I was still more alert, but still totally have your wits about you. So let's take a step back because kava isn't actually new. The plant's origin comes from the South Pacific Islands, where kava has been consumed and used in rituals for thousands of years. So roots and this stump are the portions that are uh, chopped up, mashed, mixed with water, strained, and drunk. So it's a uh, non-alcoholic, non-addictive, psychoactive substance. The active ingredient, the cavalactones, were found by uh, German chemists in the 19th century to be useful for treating people with uh, anxiety and insomnia. The pepper-based plant has seen a renaissance in the U.S. over the last few decades, and with it, more kava-specific spots have popped up stateside. Alexandra Sienkiewicz became interested in kava after trying it a few years ago. In January 2020, she decided to turn her obsession into a business venture and opened her own kava bar called Kava Social. We opened the doors and immediately had a great reception. I mean, in this neighborhood of Williamsburg, a lot of curious people, a lot of people willing to try new things. And for those that imbibe, they say the taste is quite unique. The flavor of kava has been described by some people as drinking muddy water, but with clean kava, some of the descriptions I've heard is, oh, it tastes like overwintered carrot juice. It's like an earthier style of a tea, but I really like it. It's not sweet, it has a bitter taste. If you like beets, kind of in that similar family. We've really been creative with the way that, you know, we, we mix the kava so that it's more appealing for, you know, a, a larger group of people. Traditionally, kava is consumed in groups called kava circles. And spots like Kava Social are based on one of kava's main draws the actual experience involved with drinking it. For most people, the first uh, sip of kava, maybe it takes one or two sips. Uh, you know, everyone responds differently depending on, you know, your own body, but it essentially immediately will calm your, your mind. It kind of clears the head in a very gentle way and then relaxes your, your body. And so that can impact you in, in various ways. I mean, you know, just uh, very simply speaking, for me, it's just that I feel really, really clear-minded when I drink kava. This calming side effect is another reason why kava is catching on with Gen Z millennials looking for sober options outside of the traditional party scene. I went to college, I was in a sorority, very much in the party lifestyle, and I didn't think that my two, three drinks on a Friday night was impacting my mental or physical health, but once I cut it out, I felt infinitely better. When I started coming here about two years ago, it wasn't as popular by any means. And over the course of the past couple of years, I think the pandemic gave people a chance to slow down and really get in tune with their bodies and people want to feel healthier. Okay, that all sounds good, but is kava safe? In the early 2000s, Germany and many European countries actually banned the sale of kava after a handful of cases of reported liver toxicity. Those bans were reversed in 2015. And while kava has never been banned here in the US, the FDA has issued health advisories in the past, mainly from concerns over kava pills that were unregulated or mixed with another plant-based supplement called Kratom. So Kratom, because it's kind of an opioid substitute, the national uh, poison data uh, uh, statistics will show that there's been an astronomical increase in the last 10 years of poisoning from Kratom, and that mirrors the opioid epidemic in the country. Because it's, it, the regulation isn't as stringent, you're not really certain what you're getting. In terms of pure kava though, this question still remains for some consumers. Is kava safe to drink? Dr. Jawad Ahmad says for the most part, yes. But he says the medical research is still inconclusive about kava's link to serious health risks. He also says that this one group should absolutely avoid kava altogether. If you have underlying liver disease, you shouldn't take it. And if you're gonna take it, don't take it with alcohol. 
but this is your first time trying it, right? Mm -hmm. What I always try to encourage everyone who's trying it for the first time or for, you know, the 100th time is, you know, less is always more in, in moderation and listen to your body. I don't drink it every day, but I'll drink it on days where I'm really feeling like I'm going to benefit from it where I'm, you know, eating it the most. And that's the approach we take here. We don't encourage people to, you know, just come in and slam a bunch of kavas because, um, you know, once it takes the edge off and you feel good, you feel good. Like, stop. <laughs> At that point, there's no point in going further.